Right, so um, welcome everyone. This is the second video uh, of this week's lecture. Uh, the second week, yeah, the second week's culture, uh, lecture. And I'm going to discuss about personality assessment. Yeah, this is very interesting and I'm very passionate on on this topic because I myself, I'm a researcher uh, myself and I use personality tests uh, yeah, regularly in my research and I'm trying to connect uh, I'm trying to seek for a connection between certain personality uh, characteristic with many psychological outcomes, such as whether personality would explain how people vote, yeah, how people vote politically, and how would they, whether they would take vaccine, <laughs> yeah, how, how it corresponds to, person, uh, to human personality. Uh, so basically, personality assessment. This is something that uh, is largely, uh, largely. Uh, invites many discussion and many interest yeah amongst uh, among personality psychologists because it has some practicality in it it offers the way yeah a way to better understand our personality yeah but again uh, even though it's a ma it, it has major implication uh, practically but there are lots of things that we need to consider yeah we need to consider when we're uh, trying to use when we try to use personality uh, tests as our uh, as our uh, mode of uh, of knowing yeah of knowing our personality better yeah um, some of its application for example if you see a client a clinical psychologist they use these tests uh, this personality assessment to understand the symptoms of abnormality uh, uh, in their clients. Uh, and school psychologists, for example, if you have experience in, back in the, in the high school, uh, some school psychologists, they use this to understand uh, why some students have difficulties in learning and whether certain subjects or certain major would be, uh, would fit, <laughs> yeah, would fit into your, uh, your own characteristics and whether you would be uh, you would be passionate about certain major and, 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 and some other uh, issues as well, yeah, involves, that involves school psychologists. But, but the point is that uh, uh, personality assessment is central yeah, in, in psychology. Even we have a, a dedicated course, yeah, to learn more about how we assess your know, one's personality. And counseling psychologists, they use that to, uh, to help the, their client, yeah, to help their client to pick the best job that is suitable with their own characteristics. And some research psychologists like myself, well, I'm not a psychologist per se because I don't have license to practice as a, as a psychologist, but yes, I do research in psychology uh, very often. And I use personality assessment as an attempt to account for my be uh, of my, 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 my sample's behavior, my participant's behavior in some experiments or some surveys uh, and we try to seek correlation and we try to look for explanation whether uh, one's personality could explain why people behave in different ways. Yeah, so we use that for measuring, uh, for measurement as a, as a measurement instrument uh, in our research. And this is very important. Yeah, so you don't fall into the trap of fake personality tests or pseudoscience personality tests. There are two criteria in general how we should say that one personality test is a good enough yeah, to, to explain our personality. The first one would be whether those assessments or whether those instruments are reliable. Yeah? It means that assuming that there is no change about your behavior, they would give you consistent result. Because if they don't give you consistent result, then which result should you trust? Yeah, it's simply because it when it, ha it it gives you consistent result, assuming that there is no change in your real behavior or in your, in your real personality, they would give you consistent result, which means that they are reliable. And the, the second one is validity. Yeah, psychological constructs are among the difficult to measure, <laughs> yeah, among very among uh, the, the 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 ones that are very difficult to measure, simply because the nature of psychological construct it is un it's, it is very difficult to directly observe yeah directly observe psychological uh, constructs such as personality you could not directly observe personality it does not have any form you cannot smell it you cannot even hear one's personality 
So the one thing is that it is not directly miserable, yeah. And psychologists are very creative. They find ways to measure the unmiserable. <laughs> Yeah, so we have many ways to measure this very fact realities uh, But the, the questions would be the bottom line would be whether personality test actually measures personality Yeah, not measuring Any other psychological constructs such as motivation because motivation and personality are completely different even though some paradigms some of uh, some personality theories would uh, would 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 uh, would explain otherwise but well in, in a general form personality and motivation is a separate construct yeah so we need to make sure that those assessments or those personality tests actually measuring personality they don't measure any other constructs that are not personality yeah so this is a very difficult uh, a very difficult uh, questions to to answer because we have a very dedicated a one dedicated course to uh, to 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 reveal yeah to to study about those uh, about these uh, aspects uh, and and that is psychometric yeah so we learn how to measure psychological constructs so but these two uh, uh, aspects would determine uh, the the performance of certain psychological tests and we don't have one ways yeah because we are very creative psychologists are very creative we don't have one particular way to uh, to measure personality, we have many ways, yeah, many ways to to uh, to measure personality, and it could vary. It could vary uh, in objectivity, in reliability, in validity. So not all psychological uh, personality tests are valid. They are not always reliable, <laughs> yeah, and they range from dream interpretation. Yeah, some experts they use, they try to interpret our dreams in order to reveal our personality. Seems silly. And I think it's silly too. <laughs> I don't use that, but there are uh, some experts uh, in, in psychology. They try to uh, use dream interpretation, yeah, in how they explain uh, uh, individuals' personality. And we're going to learn about that in psychoanalysis uh, paradigm, yeah, in psychoanalysis theory, and perhaps childhood recollection, or even the more objective one, the more uh, mechanized one, yeah. Uh, the one that use computer admi administ administered objective tests and these tests are widely available online yeah you could you could try that yeah and these methods could uh, vary from the first one would be self report so you basically try to report your own behavior you were asked to you are asked to uh, to observe your own behavior then report it yeah and it could be perhaps the projective one so you so the projective techniques would apply a uh, fact, uh, a fact stimuli, and we are asked by the psychologist to interpret those fact stimuli, and how we respond uh, in uh, how we respond on those stimuli would reveal how uh, the true characteristic of ourselves. I don't approve this. <laughs> I don't approve this technique. It's completely unreliable and unvalid. But some people would use that, yeah, as a part of the therapy. It could be clinical interviews, yeah. It's a very structured uh, interviews that also has some bottom lines. They have uh, also a guide to interpret uh, to interpret uh, the, the the answers from the clients, and some of them use behavioral assessment procedure, which means that the the psychologist they observe the real behavior, yeah, and it's a bit more. Uh, make sense <laughs> yeah because they observe our real behavior then they would infer our personality based on that observation uh, it could be also the more modern one uh, we uh, uh, some research psychologists they use uh, experience sampling procedure which means that um, they took uh, they take data from us regularly every day and then they would uh, see the pattern uh, see the pattern, see certain pattern from our reports, uh, from our everyday reports in, in certain period of time. So, for example, a uh, research psychologist would ask you to fill several questions that you need to answer every day in one week, for example. And then they will infer your characteristic based on the data that you give them during that one week period. Yeah. So, this is a very popular technique and I, be, I think it's more modern than, uh, than projective <laughs> technique. Yeah. And the questions that we're going to discuss in the Google, on the Google Classroom would be, have you ever take any personality test? 
and can you describe how it how it look like and do you think it's helpful to understand your personality by doing by taking that test yeah we're going to discuss this later in uh, uh, on Google Classroom and before that if you never uh, actually take any just just um, just for uh, precaution so if you have if you never take any personality test there are lots of um, uh, there are not lots of there are a few of options that you that you uh, that you could try uh, that you could try yeah to um, so that you have an experience in taking in in using the personality test the first one would be the five factor model we're going to discuss this uh, deeper uh, in this course or the MMPI the Minnesota Multifacic Personality Inventory but this is very long and it could take like uh, more than one hour to fit to complete this personality assessment so I don't really recommend that uh, I would recommend my I personally would recommend the, the big five inventory and also the hexaco personality inventory because it fulfills it fulfills that two criteria the validity and reliability and this one is the very popular one the MBTI <laughs> It is very popular, but I believe that this is a, sci a, a part of the pseudoscience, yeah? So uh, MBTI itself, the theory behind the MBTI itself, the Jung, the Jung uh, psychological theory is not really correspond to realities. So that's the first. And the second would be these um, measurement tests, uh, these uh, personality tests, they don't, they are not, uh, it is not valid not reliable <clears throat> yeah so it it basically violates those two criteria yeah so it is not valid not reliable so why would you bother to take a bti despite the popularity but in fact <clears throat> it is completely uh controversial yeah controversial amongst uh, personality psychologists we don't use mbti uh, now because of course it's not valid it's not reliable so what's the point of using this test <laughs> um, okay so this project technique I believe that some of you might have been familiar with this technique so this is the ink blot test uh, from Rosa so basically you will be presented several uh, facts stimuli fact uh, unclear or ambiguous yeah ambiguous uh, drawings from ink blot yeah and the psychologist would ask you to interpret what it means and what 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 drawing is that what picture is that and they will ask you to describe uh, a bit more deeply about about those interpretation again i strongly against this technique even though it's some 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 of it might be useful in a clinical setting uh it is quite helpful for some therapists as a as a tool to help them understand to better understand their client but again for a widely used i'm completely against this because again we could not ensure its reliability and also their validity yeah and also <laughs> quite interesting there is some cultural bias in personality assessment yeah which means that a research psychologist did uh, research personality psychologist we try to develop a more a better tool yeah to understand uh, one's personality by developing less biased uh, less biased um, uh, personality assessment but in fact it's currently biased <laughs> yeah uh, those bias including uh, Asians well basically anyone in uh, in the global south they perform badly than those who are from the global south yeah so this it, it implies that there is a cultural bias in how we measure personality so uh, there are some cases which are quite interesting so the first one would be the the case of MMPI the Minos, the, Mino, the Minnesota uh, personality test when it was first introduced in Israel, many people would find it quite difficult yeah, to complete this test because they are unfamiliar with the true-false format. Because uh, this test, basically, you were you will be presented with presented with uh, lots of statements about yourself, and then you should indicate whether it is true represent whether these statements are uh, true uh, represent yourself or it's not a representation of yourself. And people in Israel, they don't really, they don't uh, get used with, they, they don't, they are not used with, um, with th those kinds of formats, yeah. Which means that the test itself is already biased, yeah. And also the translator of the U.S. personality test uh, for use in the other culture, um, when we try to translate, yeah, those measurements in different uh, languages. We have a difficulty when translating it to other culture, to other language, because 
uh, some of them use uh, US slang and also colloquial expression that are not easily interpretable to other uh, to other languages. And also one projective test that we call thematic apperception test. Uh, again, the ambiguous drawings, yeah, but quite different from the from the in blood test that I that I showed you previously. It is cannot be used in Islamic culture because some of Islamic uh, countries they prohibit it. They prohibit the use of uncovered, uh, yeah, un un unfilled, yeah, unfilled uh, face of woman, and in that and also it against Islamic teachings. Uh, to represent humans in pictorial form yeah so of course in there is a, some resistance in in islamic culture which means that there is a cultural bias yeah and some values we need to respect some values that when they don't really approve yeah they don't really approve uh, some aspects of the personality mism, which means that not every psychology not not every personality test would be easily administered yeah in different uh, cultures so that would be the end of the second part of this lecture i'm going to continue to the next part that we're going to discuss about the ongoing research in 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 personality psychology okay.